Hello, welcome back to KO Math. Today we're going to study another technique of integration, which is called integration by parts or IBP. This technique can be used to evaluate this kind of integrals, integral of a polynomial times sine of a linear function dx, and then integral of a polynomial cosine of a linear function dx, and so on, and many more. In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips and strategies that will let you use this IBP easily. Let's get started. This is the integration by parts formula. Integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. But in this lesson, we will be evaluating integrals using tabular method. Note that we will be using this method, tabular method, for all integrals that can be evaluated by integration by parts. I will also call this method slides integrate method, and I will explain the reason behind this as we proceed. So take note that we can write this formula in this form. Okay, integral of f of x, g prime of x dx, so this is our dv, equal to uv, so it's like if you integrate dv, you'll get v. So uv minus integral of v, and then this will be your du if u is equal to f of x. Now, to get this uh, formula using tabular method, so here we have this d here, which means that we have to take derivatives of uh, this function here, repeated derivatives, and then i means integrate or integral. So that means this function, we're going to take its repeated antiderivatives. So uh, we may write this uh, formula in this way. So you have slide. So here you only have one slide. And then this one, okay, last row will be your integrate. Okay, so slide, integrate, and then here will be the signs of the product. So you have your f of x times g of x, and it's positive. And then minus, it's the integral of g of x times f prime of x. So this formula can be written in tabular form this way. So again, this is called like a slide. And then this part here, horizontal line, means we have to integrate it. This tabular method will let us evaluate uh, integrals by integration by parts easily, especially if we have to perform integration by parts multiple times. Like you have to perform integration by parts twice, thrice, and so on. And how do we do that uh, using this tabular method? So if you want to integrate f of x, g of x, dx, so if you have an integrand, okay, you divide it into two. So you write it like uh, f of x and then g of x. And then this f of x here is the function that you have to differentiate repeatedly. Okay, so f prime of x, f double prime of x, and so on. And then this uh, g of x here is the function that you have to integrate repeatedly. So let's say that g sub 1 of x is the is an antiderivative of g of x, and then this g sub 2 of x is an antiderivative of this one, and so on. And how do we find the integral here? on the left hand side. So it is uh, only a sum and difference. So in this case, we have alternating signs starting from positive and it gives you the sign of the product here. And we have slides and then integral. Okay, so you have here first take the product of this and then with positive sign, so f of x, g sub 1 of x, and then product with negative sign, so minus f prime of x, g sub 2 of x, and then product with positive sign, f double prime of x, g sub 3 of x, and then minus this means horizontal line integrate, so minus the integral of the third derivative of f times g sub 3 of x dx. So when we use this tabular method, when do we stop differentiating or integrating? So as we can see from this slides integrate method, 
So you may stop when you get a derivative which is equal to zero because if this is equal to zero, then the integral of this product, the product is just zero, so integral is equal to zero. So this becomes zero, just add a constant c and you're done. Or when you know that this product okay, can be integrated, so that means if you know already what is the antiderivative of this one, then it's very easy to evaluate this integral. And in that case, you'll be able to evaluate this original integral already. Let us now evaluate integrals. So first, let's consider this first case, wherein the integral is in the form integral of a polynomial and then times a function that we can integrate repeatedly. So for example, integral of x cubed, e to the 2x dx, integral of a polynomial times sine of 3x, integral of a polynomial times sine of this one, integral of a polynomial times this, and polynomial times e raised to ax plus b dx. And you can easily find this integral because our technique works perfectly in this case. So if you know these integration formulas, and you can easily check these formulas by differentiating the right-hand side, or you can use a substitution technique to find this uh, antiderivative of these functions. For case one, when we use our technique, the tabular method to evaluate this integral, this polynomial here always goes to the derivative column and then this g of x here goes to the integral column. So let's try these two problems. So consider integral of x cubed e to the 2x dx. So we form our table. So we have here uh, d. Okay. So we have here x cubed and then the remaining factor in the integrand will be our i. Okay, e to the 2x. So now we take the repeated derivatives of x cubed and we'll get 3x squared, take the derivative, it will be 6x, and then take the derivative, you'll get 6, take the derivative of 6, which is equal to 0. Since it's equal to 0, if we're going to use the slides, integrate, so the integral here will be just 0. Okay, so we stop here. So now for the i, Okay, so we have e to the 2x, so we integrate repeatedly, so e to the 2x, its integral or antiderivative will be e to the 2x over 2. Okay, so it's very easy to verify. When you differentiate this, you'll get 1 half e to the 2x times 2 by chain rule. So you'll get e to the 2x. And then again, when you integrate this, you'll get e to the 2x over 4. Integrate this one, you'll get e to the 2x over 8. Integrate this, you'll get e to the 2x over 16. And how do we get the expression for this integral? So we take the slides. Okay. And the integrate here is just 0. So just think of it as slides if you have this uh, 0 row. Okay, so again, we have alternating signs, so we take the products of this, but with alternating signs, okay, for the product. So we, the answer will be, so x cubed times this one will be 1 half x cubed e to the 2x, and then minus this product, 3 fourths x squared e to the 2x, and then plus this product, and if we simplify that, 6 over 8 is equal to 3 fourths x e to the 2x, and then minus this product, so 6 over 16 is just minus a 3 over 8 e to the 2x, and then plus the arbitrary constant c. For case 1, we can actually evaluate the integral without constructing a table. Let me show it to you. Just keep in mind your integration by parts formula. So here we have to divide the integrand into two parts. You have the u and then dv. Your dv always includes the dx. And for case one, your u is always the polynomial factor. So the first term okay, in the answer will be uv. So this is just your u and then v is just the integral of dv. In this case, the integral of e to the 2x is e to the 2x over 2. Now to get the other terms, just keep on differentiating this one and then integrating this. And you may stop when you know already that the derivative of this is equal to 0. So if we do that, we'll get derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. 
and the derivative of this is 6x its derivative is 6 and when we take the derivative of 6 we'll get 0 so we stop here now we keep on integrating this one so the integral of this is e to the 2x over 4 integral of this is e to the 2x over 8 and integrate it again you'll get e to the 2x over 6 and you're going to have alternating signs here so therefore you'll get minus and then plus minus and then plus the arbitrary constancy so we'll also get the answer that we got from doing tabular method next problem let's evaluate this integral so pause this video if you want to try this out first so to evaluate this again we use tabular method so we have this polynomial in this derivative column and then this remaining factor in the integral integrand will be in the integral column so we differentiate this repeatedly so you'll get first derivative is 2x take its derivative again it's 2 and then take its derivative is equal to 0 so we stop because the integral of this product will be equal to 0 now we anti-differentiate this so take the integral of this we'll get negative cosine 3x over 3 and integrate again it's negative sine of 3x over 9 integrate again cosine of 3x over 27 so how do we get our answer so we take the products the slides here because the integral here is equal to zero so it's enough to consider the slides and again the signs of the products are alternating from positive sign plus minus and then plus so therefore the product of this is negative one third x squared plus one cosine three x and then this is the product is negative here and then times a negative sign this is minus a negative number so you'll get a plus 2 over 9x sine of 3x and then plus this product which is 2 over 27 cosine 3x plus c let us now consider the second case so let's evaluate this kind of integrals integrals of the form e to a linear function sine of a linear function dx or integral of e raised to a linear function cosine of a linear function dx so how do we use tabular method in evaluating such integrals so let me show it to you through a specific uh, problem so let's evaluate integral of e raised to 2x sine of x dx so here again we have uh, two columns so derivative and then integral so here we choose e raised to 2x in the derivative column and then sine x in the integral column but actually you may interchange these two okay so if this is our uh, function here so we take repeated derivatives okay you'll get 2 e to the 2x and then 4 e to the 2x and then this is sine x and then its antiderivative is negative cosine x and then this one its antiderivative is negative sine x now when do you stop here you may stop if this one is a constant multiple of the integrand of the original integrand in this case the integrand is e to the 2x sine x and we notice that this one here is just a constant multiple of this it's only negative 4 times e to the 2x sine x. So this will be your hint to stop differentiating or integrating. So if you see that this uh, integrate row here okay, is just a multiple of your original integral, then you stop doing integration or differentiation because we can already write this one okay using our slides integrate technique as okay again alternating signs and then we take the product of this it's negative e to the 2x cosine x and then it's minus of this product so that will be plus 2 e to the 2x sine x and then plus this integral which is minus integral of 4 e to the 2x sine x dx now since this is just a multiple of the original integral actually we can move this integral to the left hand side so this is just what so if we move this to the uh, left hand side it becomes plus 4 of this integral 
So we'll get here this integral plus 4 times this integral. You'll get 5 times the original integral equal to the remaining terms on the right hand side which is negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 e to the 2x sine x so to find this integral just divide both sides by 5 in this case okay so this dividing both sides by 5 and we'll get this one and then don't forget the arbitrary constancy because this is an indefinite integral now we consider all the other cases all integrals that can be evaluated by integration by parts but we're still going to use tabular method to evaluate the integral or we call this uh, slides integrate method so keep in mind that if we use tabular form okay the first row will be you have here the u and then the function under the this uh, column i here is your dv but dx is hidden so in evaluating the other cases it's very important to know how to find this u and how to find the dv so let me give you some strategies on how to find u and dv so first you may choose u in this order okay so L using this acronym, L-I-A-T-E. So L stands for logarithmic functions, I inverse trigonometric functions, A algebraic functions, T trigonometric functions, and then E exponential functions. So uh, this one is really very helpful. So it works in general, but there are, of course, uh, some exemptions. And the other tip is that you choose the dv because sometimes this doesn't work so in those cases you choose the dv to be the most complicated factor of the integrand of course it includes the dx that can be integrated and your u must be the part of integrand with simple derivative or probably with a derivative that is not more complicated than u Let's now evaluate some integrals using these tips. So let's consider this integral of x secant squared x dx. So what do you think will be our u here? So from li8, okay, li8te. So we have here uh, two functions. We have uh, trigonometric functions and then algebraic function x. So therefore, okay, since we have to choose the u in that order l i a t so a comes first before t so algebraic before trigonometric function so this must be our u here and of course this will be our dv the remaining factor here and we'll get this one so if this is our x so its derivative is equal to one and then take its derivative again it's equal to zero so if this is our uh, dv without the dx of course the dx here is hidden so when we integrate it it is equal to tangent x okay and we already have actually a formula for integral of tangent x if you memorize that one it is ln of absolute value of secant x okay but of course if you don't know that uh, formula for integral of tangent x dx then you may integrate this by substitution method so you can write this down as sine x over cosine x but if you let this to be your u cosine x your du will be negative sine x dx so you can write this tangent x as the negative of negative sine x over cosine x so if this is your u this is just your du and then times the dx so its integral is it's the negative integral of du over u so therefore it is equal to negative ln absolute value of u which is cosine x so therefore our answer here will be again slides our integrate here is just zero so slides you have x times tangent x and then minus the product of this which is plus ln of absolute value of cosine x plus c let us now evaluate this one integral of sine inverse x dx so here we can evaluate this 
by integration by parts and of course our dv will be equal to this dx because this is the only part that is easily integrated okay for this integral so of course our u here will be sine inverse x and if we do tabular integration by parts if this is our u okay then our d derivative is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared and then the integral of this one so take note dv is equal to dx but the dx here is hidden so therefore our dv here is just 1 right the dv is like 1 times dx so your function here is equal to 1 and then if we integrate that of course we'll get x now before you continue differentiating and integrating do you know that you can make some adjustments okay in these uh, two functions okay because if if we're going to use the slide integrate method you're going to integrate actually this part here okay which can be evaluated by substitution method but you can also do that in this uh, tabular form so what you can do is make an equivalent expression of this product and you can write it down so this is square root of 1 minus x squared can be written as 1 minus x squared raised to negative 1 half and i multiplied it by negative 2x so that i can easily integrate this expression right using substitution rule because this is like in the form u raised to negative one half and then our du will be negative 2x dx but the dx here is hidden and make sure that this expression is equivalent to the previous one so when we multiply this to negative 2 times negative 1 half you'll get positive 1 so here we only made an adjustment but this part here is equivalent to this part so so that we won't be confused in for example in writing our answer we again write here a horizontal line not a slide because we didn't differentiate the function so this product is equal to this product so now when we differentiate this we'll get zero and when we integrate this one it is just uh, integration by substitution so integral of u to the negative one half du you'll get u to the one half over one half and now our integral is equal to zero now because this is like a modified tabular form that's the reason why i called it slides integrate method because to get our final answer we just consider the slides and then the integral here at the last part but the integral here will be equal to zero so the answer here just consider the slides okay alternating signs so you'll get here x sine inverse x and then minus this product but that is a negative product so it will be plus one half times this is one over one half so that is equal to one and this written in radical form is square root of one minus x squared and plus the arbitrary constant c next problem let's evaluate integral of x raised to 5 ln x dx so using tip number one using uh, li8 so we have to choose ln x as our u so therefore our function under the integral column will be x raised to 5 so if we do that we'll get here again ln x and then x raised to 5 when we differentiate this we'll get 1 over x and then when we integrate this it's equal to x raised to 6 over 6. now you can actually already stop here why because the product of this it's very easy to integrate but again you may continue using tabular method just making adjustment on this expression so you can do this one here so this x raised to 6 over x is just x raised to 5 and then this is 1 over 6 so you may put the 1 over 6 here and 
this expression is just equal to 1 over 6 times x raised to 5. So we put just a horizontal line here because this integral is the same as the integral of this. Now, if you differentiate this one, so the derivative of this is equal to 0, integrate this one is equal to x raised to 6 over 6. Again, using our technique, slides integrate method, slides, and then integrate here is just integral is integral of 0 dx is just 0 so our final answer will be again only alternating signs for slides and the last one which is the integrate but this one is already equal to 0 so you have here plus and then minus so you'll get take the product here you'll get 1 over 6 x raised to 6 ln x and then minus this product which is 1 over 36 x raised to 6 plus c. Now let's consider this integral, integral of ln x quantity squared dx. And again, let's use this uh, slides integrate method to evaluate the integral. So again here, the obvious choice for dv is dx. So again, our function here is just one because the dx here is hidden. And our u is this one ln of x quantity squared. Now, if we differentiate this, so by extended power rule, you bring down the power, subtract 1 from the power times the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, you'll get this one. And integrate this one, it is equal to x. Now, before you can, before you differentiate further, you can actually make adjustments because this is just like the integral in the integration by parts. So make adjustments because as you can see here, x over x is just 1. So you may put 1 here and then this one, it is 2 ln x. You can, we cannot put the ln x here because we don't know how to integrate it. So in this case, just keep the 2 ln x here, but you have here 1. So we use horizontal line here because this expression, the product of this is just equal to the previous one. So you only create a slide when you differentiate or integrate. So now we differentiate. So the derivative of this is 2 over x and the integral of this okay, is x. Now, keep in mind, you can actually already stop here because the integral of this product is just integral of 2 dx. So it's very easy to integrate. But again, you can make some adjustments. So x over x is just 1. And you may put the 2 here. And it's a horizontal line because you just what make an equivalent expression to this product. And now when you differentiate again, it's 0. And then integrate, you'll get x. So you only create slide when you differentiate. Okay. So now using the slides integrate, technique will get the answer again alternating signs for slides and then the last part of course is just zero the integrate part here is just zero so the answer will be again positive of this product which is x ln x quantity squared minus this product so minus 2x ln x and then plus this product which is 2x and then plus c so as I said a while ago, you may actually stop at this part. If you're going to stop here, then you'll get, you just consider how many slides, one, two slides. And you'll get this one here, this product, and then minus this product. And then, of course, it's alternating sign here. You'll get a plus here. Okay, plus and you'll get a plus integral of 2dx. So therefore, it's very easy to integrate this one. So you may stop this differentiation and integration if you know that this row is already, you can easily integrate it. So 2 over x times x is just 2, so you can easily integrate that one. And integral of 2dx is just 2x plus c. Moving to our last problem, let's evaluate integral of x cubed over square root of x squared plus 4 dx. If you want to integrate this by integration by parts, we cannot use tip number one. That is using Li8 because in this case, we only have an algebraic function and we cannot let this as our u because the derivative is very complicated. 
So we want the u to be a function whose derivative is a simple function or it is not more complicated. So therefore, in this case, we can use tip number two, that is we choose the dv. Okay. dv is the most complicated portion of this one that is easily integrated. And that is, in this case, we can choose this uh, portion of the integrand with the dx. The dx here is hidden. Okay, so why did we choose this one? Because we can easily integrate this by substitution method. So this is like u raised to negative one half, and you have the du here, two x, and then times the hidden dx. And make sure that the product of this is equal to your integrand. So this is this factor here is just one over square root of x squared plus four, and two x times x squared over two is your x cubed. So now when we differentiate this, we'll get x. And when we integrate this, integral of u raised to negative 1 half du is just u raised to 1 half over 1 half. And now before you differentiate further, because you cannot integrate this one, so that means you make adjustments. Okay, But we know that this, it is like u raised to something, you'll get the du here. Okay, So if you want to do integration by substitution again, you move this x okay, to this uh, i column. And you'll get here times 2x, and then you put the 1 here. So 1 over 1 half is just 2. So the product of this two functions here is equal to the product of these two. So we only put horizontal lines here. So now we can already differentiate and integrate the other side. So differentiate this one will get zero. Integrate this one. It is again integral of u raised to one half du. So the integral is just u raised to three halves. Add one to the power divided by the new power. And therefore using our technique slides integrate so the answer will be again alternating signs plus minus and then here plus but this is zero you'll get plus of this product it's equal to this one and then minus this product which is equal to this one and then plus the arbitrary constant c so actually we can solve this by substitution method Okay, using this our u. If you want to know how to solve this by substitution method, watch my other video. The link is given in the description below. So the rule of the thumb when you're doing integration, so first you apply substitution rule before what? Before integration by parts. So in, in this case, this is solvable by substitution method or by integration by parts. Okay, that's everything for this lesson. If you enjoy the tips that you learned in this video, please don't forget to hit that like button below and share this to your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see the new videos that I release every week. Again, this is Dennis of KO Math. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.